if you look just down there, and I apologize to people who can't see on the video, but there is a large mass of wires with something hanging out of a laptop and a screen. Uh, and this, this, is, this is related to Go in a little bit. A little bit. Um, the first thing is there is a, a serial, a, a bus, which is mainly used by microcontrollers. Um, if you're using Arduinos or Raspberry Pi or something like that, it's called the I2C bus. It's a little simple serial protocol for talking to low-speed chips. Um, it turns out that it's not just for microcontrollers. It's actually inside all your laptops. Um, it's for thermal sensors. It's how you read the serial numbers off the DRAM chips. Um, and interesting enough, it's how, when you plug in your laptop, when you plug into the screen over here, how you detect the external monitor. It's actually part of the, I mean, yeah, you, you can see like I've closed the circuit, there must be a monitor there, but how you get the properties of it, how you get like its serial number, its resolution, that kind of thing. It's actually done through I2C. Um, and yeah, it's actually exposed on these pins of the VGA port um, or on DV, DVI or even HDMI. It's always, it's always present there. Um, and I ran across this a couple of weeks ago reading Hackaday uh, and there was a, a, a kind of a, a chain of articles uh, of people who've built their own little I2C adapters so that you can use this not with your Raspberry Pi or your Arduino but with, just with your laptop. Um, so you can talk to IC, I2C devices from Linux. Uh, you just need to mod probe this module uh, and that, that's all there is to it. You get a little device in your dev tree and you can talk to it just like uh, most of the other devices. It's just a file. Um, I2C is uh, it's a shared bus, maybe like Ethernet. Things have addresses. So this is running I2C detect, which really just kind of probes all the addresses. And you can see down there at address 50, uh, that is the default address for a screen. So that's actually uh, bus number two on whatever laptop there was they took it. That's actually the, um, the laptop screen. That's the reporting in at address 50. And that's how your X display driver knows the resolution of your, your screen. Um, on, on this ThinkPad, there are about six buses. On that guy, there's a similar number. Um, they connect to all kinds of ra random things. So using what I, what I found on that link, uh, th there's a bunch of guys that built a bunch of different adapters, but that was the simplest one. I went down to JCAR, got a um, DB15 connector, and just uh, wired up the, the five wires I wanted, sorry, the four wires I wanted, plugged it into... Um, into my laptop. This is a little bit, it's a little bit hard to see, but basically that's the adapter going into a level shifter and then going into a little LCD screen. And I'll, I'll post these slides online, but you can, you can read it. It just says, yeah, I, I can talk to I2C. Yep, it works. Now, what was actually driving the display that you might have seen there is actually, is actually some Go. And so to bridge the gap here, I had to write, write, write a little bit of code. Um, so this, the I2C package that I wrote just opens dev I2C, uh, whichever bus number you want. Uh, we do one little I, ICTL to basically twiddle, twiddle something that is invisible by the file interface. And then anything you read or write on that file descriptor goes out that I2C port. Um, what, what that, uh, this line here is doing is just basically saying bind this file descriptor to the particular address at the other end. So it's basically saying I want it, it's kind of like dialing. I want to dial and talk to this guy at the other end. Um, and then down there we can see we can see we've got a write implementation just for the buffer you send in. We just shove it down that file descriptor. Uh, I don't know why I didn't make it look like the standard writer interface. I can't remember. I wrote this code a couple of weeks ago before I went to New Zealand. Um, so that just lets you just send raw bytes, but you need to talk the protocol of the LCD. So I uh, stole some code off the internet, uh, wrote a, another type that takes an I2C adapter, and then kind of has some kind of high level commands to you know, clear the screen, to set the position, to write at some text where that cursor is. And so now we can now we can open a device. 27 is the default address, set up the LCD, uh, turn the backlight on, clear the screen, and now write uh, on the first line at zero position. I don't know why it's not zero indexed. Um, the, uh, the date and the time, and also just a, a message at the bottom, and then go to sleep. So that just, when you run that, this is another version of the adapter that I built. 
you get that is being driven by that that Go program there. Um, and th th this this worked okay. Um, like I could put static text on there. I thought maybe I could put a tweet on there or something, but it's only sixteen by four lines, which is um, only sixty four characters. So even given how small a tweet is, it, even that wouldn't fit on there. Um, but I thought w one thing that was was clear all the way up is that I'm just building on files. So the I2C bus is a file, and the thing at the other end, we're just talking over the kind of file interface. And processes talk over file descriptors. And so this is all just different flavors of IO, IO writers. Um, so maybe we can do something a little more interactive. Um, and so I wrote this thing called tiny term. Um, and again, at the top, we take a, take a, a connect to the VGA port, make a new LCD driver, same as before. Now I have another type here called LCD writer, which takes the raw LCD and that turns it into a writer, a, a go a go writer. So we take we take that writer and we assign it to the standard out of the command we're about to execute, as well as standard error. And then we run that command. So basically, tiny term bash minus i or date or something like that will connect the standard out of a subprocess to this terminal to this little LCD screen. Um, this is just showing. The right method. And so it's a little more complicated than just take the byte in and um, shove it down the wire because we have to deal with this is actually this is actually a two-dimensional screen. It's not just a stream of bytes. So there are things like handle tab properly, make new line, move down a line, and then move back to the start of the line. Um, and this is kind of the, the default case for just a, a normal character where I have to the memory layout of the LCD is crazy. So I have to map between a linear position and the address on uh, the, the actual memory address of the LCD. And so that's pretty much what I just said. Now, demo, I'm going to need somebody else because I need three hands here. So if somebody else wants to come and basically hold this camera so we can see the output, can I have a, can I have a volunteer? If I don't have a volunteer, I'm going to choose someone who, know, who I know your name. Excellent. What's your name? I'm in. thank you. All right, let's. I'm gonna steal a. If you fold it, so you need to line it up like that, and then hold it right there. So I have. Okay, so what's actually happening? Let me just. Sorry, this is so Rube Goldberg-ish. I was going to use my laptop, but then I realized I needed it to project the screen, so I needed another laptop to actually drive this. So um, actually, let's just use the Hello World example. Yeah, maybe you can just hold it in a little bit, a little bit closer, just like try and fill up the screen. We go. One of the one of the problems is that the um, I I never implemented uh, setting the board rate of this serial bus. And on this laptop, it's very fast. But on this one's obviously really slow. You can see the cursor slowly making its way across. Across again. All right. Cool. Hold it there. Okay. So that's that's kind of like a static thing. Um, There we go, there's my, there's my cursor. Um, oh no, oh god. Oh no, it, it, it is scrolling up, it just scrolls up very, very slowly because of the board rate, I'm sorry. <laughs> and that is it, thank you very much. <laughs>